Hi, so um, cruising around regularly on our boat Tiki, um, you know, you pretty much rely when you're anchoring on your windlass. And the uh, last couple of weeks we've been having a few problems with it, and uh, particularly it's been slowing down and sometimes not starting as well. So we uh, decided to give it some servicing time. And uh, here we are in the back um, deck of Tiki, and we're doing the servicing over the next hour or two. So uh, I'll talk you through what we're doing, and um, hopefully it'll help you if you come to have to fix your lip, your um, your um, windlass. Um, ours, ours, as I said, is a Lofrens. It's a Tigris, which is pretty common, and many of them are very similar anyway. Yep. So the problem we've been having with the uh, the Tigris, a Lofrens Tigris, is that when we've been turning it on and clicking it on, it's been starting really slowly, um, almost as if it's kind of waking up and wanting to get going. So it starts slowly and then then picks up. Sometimes it just doesn't start, and sometimes you know it just it, it's just completely dead. And actually, we've been having to turn manually um, the, the windlass, and, and that almost kick starts it. So we know there's a problem somewhere, and we've been working through it, servicing it uh, to get it back up to speed. So before we get to the stage where we've took it off our boat and we've got it on the back deck, then we did a couple of checks, um, primarily just to make sure we were getting some voltage through and the right amount of voltage through. And, and the problem wasn't just down to um, some dodgy connections. Four or five years it's been on the boat, so you know there was a possibility that there might have been some corrosion on the connections or some corrosion in the relay box as well. So um, what we did was we, we re-cleaned all these connections on the motor, the, the, the negative, the, the two positives. We traced it back, made sure there were good connections uh, on the relay box in and out, and then went all the way back to the battery as well. After we'd done that and made sure that we had good connections, then we tested it running um, and volt tested it to make sure we had good voltage uh, at this point as well. All that was good, so um, we were getting the sneaky feeling that there was something wrong with the motor inside. So one of the small challenges of, of actually doing some work on this and taking the motor off is that you need to drain the oil. And the easiest way to drain the oil is to take this off the deck uh, and um, tip it upside down basically with this um, oil um, filler open and actually just tip it out and get all the oil out by, uh, by inverting it. Of course to get the motor off then we had to do three things. The first was we had to disconnect the electricity here which is straightforward enough and we just disconnected the three um, connections. Uh, of course before that we turned the power off, uh, the uh, solenoid switch, uh, the, the um, fuse second thing we did was take the chain off, disconnect the chain from the shackle on the anchor and drop it through. And then we got four bolts and they're fairly straightforward. We just unbolted the four bolts uh, and then lifted the whole anchor off. So as we look at the, the motor with, with it very clear without, without the connections on, um, it's obvious there are three major mounting bolts um, for the motor and there's also two retaining screws at the back here. Now, if you want to just have a quick look at the, the back air and the, the, the brushes um, and see what's back there and see if everything's all right, then you can just take these two screws off and that's a fairly straightforward process. They've got a couple of little rubber um, seal washers on there that you want to keep as well. But then you'll quickly see as you take this off, then um, the whole area is pretty easily visible and, and easy to inspect as well. Okay what you'll see once you take the back cover off um, is the four brushes um, for the motor that go onto the commutator. They're fairly straightforward to take off and, and just inspect and make sure um, that there's some left and uh, make sure that they're actually connected. They're retained by a spring in here and um, what all you have to do is take that spring back, pull that spring back and the brush will come out and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay so all I'm doing to get the um, brush out, uh, one, one of the four brushes and they're all the same, is just to put a small flathead screwdriver under the spring, pull the spring back and just work it out. You could use a pair of thin nose pliers if you wanted but it's easy enough with your fingers and then just release the spring back and that's the <coughs> brush coming out. Okay so after, when, when we had a quick look inside it was pretty obvious looking down at the commutator arm and inside it was very very dirty so uh, we decided we needed a good clean out the brushes were pretty solid they weren't worn down completely um, so you know that wasn't a problem um, and so we decided to take the motor off and i'll talk through that 
um, now once I've took the other um, brushes off. Okay so you can see from this shot um, looking down the motor I've took the four brushes out they're all very similar um, none of them are completely worn down um, but as I said we know we've got lots and lots of dirt in there so we're going to take this motor off so we can get access um, to the commutator arm and clean, clean the inside up. Um, I'll do that really straightforward. Three bolts and we'll just take those off. Now this probably will be quite stiff after it's been on for quite a while and we'll need a bit of um, levering off. Um, you might need to get under here and, and bring it off but at some point you'll be able to bring it up and it will actually come out. <coughs> so as I've brought it out um, you'll see that there's a keyway and that keyway connects in and has connected into the the gearbox drive here and when you take this off after a while you might find that yeah, the keyway is jammed uh, and when you bring the motor out you'll find that you'll bring the motor out and the whole of this bearing will come out uh, along with the, uh, the, the drive. That's not a problem, um, it just happens. When we, when we pulled ours out um, the keyway that's holding the shaft in here is, is obviously pretty tight and um, so it came the whole motor came out on its own uh, we couldn't get it off by shifting or tapping it uh, or pulling it so we took the next option and we just unscrewed the four retaining bolts for this plate and uh, they're just allen keys and took all those out And then once the four Allen keys are out, this plate um, is now loose and we grabbed a rubber mallet and, and just tapped around underneath. And after a little bit of tapping, um, this shaft came out on its own um, as one unit. So you'll see the, the retaining plate and then the shaft with its key in as well. And once they're separate, um, we can start to look at pulling this motor apart now. Okay, I'll just put this drive back in. I'll just drop it in. If you look down, you'll you'll see where the shaft seal is, and you'll drop it in. It'll go in nice and easily. And then the set of bearings that you'll have brought out. Again, you'll just keep them in sequence and just tap them back in, uh, and they will just tap in quite easily. And, and they're back in place now. Okay, the, the next part um, of this is just to pull the motor apart so we can get access to clean it. Um, the way we do this is just take two bolts uh, and, and undo them. These bolts um, run through, long bolts all the way to the back of the motor. And as you'll see, it'll allow us just to pull everything apart, I think the 10 millimeters. So I'll just do that quickly. Um, they're fairly easy to get off. And then that'll allow me to hopefully, whoop, there we go, drop the back of the motor out um, and that'll give me complete access to all this area and to the commutator, the commutator there um, and the whole of the inside of the motor. So I'll be able to see uh, if there's anything wrong and if there's any dirt. Okay, you're looking at the motor here that we've pulled apart and just to say, you know, after four years, and this was pretty dirty inside so we'd give it a really good clean out and um, making sure that you know all, all the various bits of dust have gone and we've also cleaned up the commutator here which was pretty dirty um, just give it a clean up with some uh, a wire brush and some um, some wet and dry fine wet and dry paper uh, we cleaned all here as well so basically we just cleaned everything to make sure that we've got no shorts I guess and um, everything's as it should be so we give it a good clean and um, everything's nice and honky dory. Check the bearings and they're solid. I'll put a bit of grease on them and we're going to start putting them back together. 
there's a small washer that sits on the very bottom of the bearing here and drops right in the very bottom there so I'll place that in first and that's sat in there and then complete opposite of what we started that's spinning around and then I'm going to put the top case on making sure the rubber seals in place there's actually a little notch in here so um, there's only one way it can go in and it's notched there so I'll drop it in and click it in and then all I have to do is re-bolt and that's the motor put back together okay I'm going to start putting the brushes back in and um, just as before the reverse uh, I need to just get in there and get behind this spring without doing it too much damage so that's just out there and then I need to just pull it right back and drop the bush back in and there it's seated I mean just um, as an aside if the brushes did need changing they're fairly easy to change um, all you have to do is unscrew this fitting here and the whole brush will fall out okay. so where am I now I've put the bushes um, back in all four of them and screw the back cover on again so we've got nice clean um, brushes nice clean commutator and we know everything's um, working in there as it should be and now I want to put the back plate on before um, fixing this back on when you place it down you just need to double check um, that you get this in the right place and the right place is looking down through the top bolt hole into the middle negative connector once you get that in place then you've got it in the right place any other place um, it'll be offset so just run it round until you find that it lines up and then put the four allen screws back in and tighten up